Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Sandy Writes. Today we're going to be talking about a book called Take Me With You When You Go, which is out at the end of the month, at the end of August. So I got this as an ebook advanced reader copy from NetGalley in exchange for an honest review. I was kind of excited when I got the little notification saying this book's available because this book was my entire personality in like 2014. Did it come out in 2014? Let's have a look see, look see, look see. 2015. Yeah, this book was my entire personality when I was 14. And not this book in particular, but I did really enjoy it every day. Even though I had so many faults of it, there was something very charming about it that I loved. So when I got the notification from NetGalley saying that this book's available, I was very interested. I wanted to take more time to sit with this book before writing the review. It's um, the 10th of August today. I read the bulk of the book yesterday and wrote the review yesterday. <laughs> so I wanted to take more time to sit with it, but because this is an advanced reader copy in exchange for a review and the book's out at the end of the month, I'm a bit pressed for time. So as a disclaimer, I will say that these are like my fresh, undeveloped thoughts that I wrote pretty much immediately after finished reading the book for the first time. And Take Me With You When You Go is described as a story of hope, siblinghood and finding your home in people who matter most. So I think I will break this review down into those three categories. So let's begin. So number one, siblinghood. This is the category that I wrote the most about, I think. So the thing I love about this book is that it is a sibling story above anything else. B has run away from her broken home, leaving behind only a secret email address to communicate with Ezra, her younger brother. The siblings have always had each other for solace when their home doesn't feel safe, and that doesn't change when she's gone. We learn about the entirety of their relationship from these emails, from the secret email address back and forth, and they start from the day that B disappears. They exchange memories of them growing up, more recent events that triggered B to leave and B eventually finds out about events that occurred before Ezra was even born. To me a lot of this background information, specifically their memories from growing up, felt a bit forced because I was very caught up in um, what would realistically be written in an email. I understand why the authors chose this format as it's the one that makes the most logistical sense for the plot but a lot of it felt like info dumping just written beneath an email address and that didn't really work for me personally and it quickly felt tiresome. It also removes a lot of the emotion from the moments that have been described as the characters are looking back on them with less connection. And it also made the side characters feel very disconnected from the story and very two dimensional. I wanted to be with the characters rather than dwelling in their memories. So this point is more specifically about Ezra rather than the theme of siblinghood but as I've committed to this format for the review and I don't know where else to put it, it's gonna go here. This is, I don't know, a slight character spoiler. But I like that Ezra's sexuality isn't the focal point of the book. He's gay and there's moments where he reflects on his first kiss and the realisation about his sexuality and the book shows the relationship with his boyfriend and also his boyfriend's family but the focus still very much remains on the siblings relationship and their home. So part two is finding your home. This book is an incredibly raw and honest portrayal of parental abuse and how it's inflicted on the lives of the people who they were supposed to keep safe. When B disappears, Ezra is left behind to deal with the fallout in addition to the regular emotional abuse that he was experiencing. And as the abuse comes increasingly physical, this is more slight spoilers for plot, <laughs> um, Ezra seeks an escape through Joe, who is B's ex-boyfriend. I don't think it ever clarifies if they broke up. He's just left behind. But he's very worried about her. And Ezra also seeks an escape from home through his boyfriend Terence, who I believe is black and Christian. If you want to talk about diversity in this book, I mean, we have one character who talks about going to a black church, and then we have a female side character with an Asian, I'm sorry, I don't know which country specifically, but an Asian surname. But these are both side characters 
and the girl also has very little presence in the story. So take with that what you will about diversity and what you really wanted from this book. But also this book explores the dynamics of these new homes very well. You have refuge with someone who is doing it almost as a favour to someone they love and safety with someone who is your found family. There's also scenes I adore where Terence has to admit to his parents that Ezra is more than his special friend and how Ezra has to adapt to being part of Terence's family. So the third and final part of this review is hope. This is the part that left me with so many mixed feelings about the book. In my opinion, there's very little hope until the final few pages where the book feels like it's already reached its conclusion. I almost wanted an epilogue that carried out some of the promises that were written in the final emails, but I don't think it would have made sense written in the email format. So I kind of want an epilogue from a different perspective almost. This lack of hope throughout the book dulled the impact of the emotional scenes. It's very easy to become overwhelmed or underwhelmed or in my case both <laughs> with emotional scenes when they are constant and there's no lighter scenes to contrast or complement them. In many places it felt like the story was dragging and it wasn't really going anywhere. The plot twists and the big reveals and the climaxes all felt the same in like emotional value as the siblings recount in the very bland parts of their day. Like every single scene was a 10 out of 10 for like sad emotion that I, I just don't know. Everything felt equally important. So like when there was this big plot twist I just didn't care because it's described in the same way as something very mundane. So I was like, oh, I'm supposed to be excited about this? It doesn't feel like it. <laughs> that sounds very negative, but that's just an issue I have with this book. It's an issue that I also kind of had with um, Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, where every like, the emotion for every scene is turned right up to the top. So I just don't know how I'm supposed to be feeling about everything. Overall, I would give this book a three and a half star rating. I think I put it as three stars on Goodreads because obviously no half ratings. There were a lot of moments that caught my attention and that I really enjoyed, but they were eventually overshadowed by this very tiresome email format and some darkness that completely swallowed up the light. So if you are interested in reading Tea With Me You Go, I believe that the expected publication date is August 31st, 2021 but also there is an ebook advance reader copy on NetGalley if you would like to read in exchange for an honest review. So thank you for watching this review and I will see you next time. Bye.